Hi, Rachel. Hi, John. How are you? We're great, man. How are you? Well, better than I deserve. Outstanding. Outstanding. What's up, man? Well, I'm a, I am was just reaching out. I'm a little discouraged right now with um, um, uh, home ownership and eventually getting to the point of buying a house. Um, I'm, I'm currently on the plan, and I'm not too soon to finish up baby step two, but soon enough. But I'm just I'm, – I'm a teacher, and it's – with the salary versus the home prices in the area, it's just really discouraging to – know if I will ever be able to own a home. Yeah, no, I hear you. Um, so what, how old are you, James? I'm 30. You're 30, okay. And how much do you make a year? Between my teaching job and all of my other jobs, right at 60. Okay. And what part, are no- what part of Knoxville are you in? Um, the south area okay. of Knoxville. Yeah. So what are what are homes going for down there right now? Well, looking within the area, um, I'm going to say reasonably about three hundred thousand. Okay. Do you have a family? I do not. Okay. No, ma'am. Great. Well, um, I mean, I can I can share in the frustration of the market. I mean, it's been a wacky. A uh, few years for housing, it's it's stabilized, uh, which is which is great. But also, uh, the values and everything are up. Obviously, interest rates are 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 higher than what they were at two percent uh, back in the day. So, so I understand the frustration. And the hard thing is, James, when it comes to money and looking at what you can't afford, is it's really looking at the math. And John talks a lot about this, that that facts are your friends. And even though we have emotions around things, whether it's talking to an 18-year-old and they want to go to a private out-of-state college, but they can't afford it. They're they're frustrated about that. And I get that. They're going to have to choose a different option, right? So uh, so what I would say to you, James, is that I, I don't think that it's not out of, it's not out of the picture. I mean, making 60 grand is you're doing great. And, you know, you're single. So even what type of house or type of living situation residence you're look at you're looking at you know you could even open up the door to options of a town home you know owning some type of real estate is a great goal to have for your overall financial picture so i would continue to tell you to 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 go there it may take you longer to save up a 5 10% down payment for something but uh, i wouldn't take it completely out of the question but where you're looking and the type of home you're looking at may have to shift. That expectation may shift, which is frustrating. And that's not fun and all that. But I think the reality of what, of what you're, where you're at is, is what you have to focus on. So James, um, tell me if, if this is part of, of the frustration too. My dad was, was a policeman. And I remember... The frustration, this was, he never said this out loud, but it was just in the air of our home. This idea that our local community paid policemen so poor that he was, took a job with public service and didn't have enough money, barely had enough money to buy a house. And, 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 and we struggled with groceries sometimes. And we had a one car house. It's not like we lived this extravagant, crazy life. And then, brother, I was a public school teacher for a few years in Texas. I couldn't have bought a house. And that was before the numbers went crazy. And I remember that same sense of, I went to college. I got a degree. I'm a teacher. And I can't buy a home. Like I remember that haunting. My wife Mm -hmm. was a teacher for years. That same thing. So part of that frustration, right, is going to be, I did everything right. Yeah, the uh, yeah, the overall choices. And I can't afford on. to live in my own community, yeah. right? Is that some of this, James? That is part of it. Yes. Yes. And I you know, it wasn't always this way. No, it wasn't. It was Honestly, wasn't. it 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 wasn't. And even looking at um going back to Rachel looking at townhomes, you can't even find a townhome for a decent price. Yeah, they, everything in the area they get goggled the up gobbled up for college students. Um, Rachel's right, and I hate to be hate to I hate to second her on this one. Is we can't get a pass on math, and so the questions you have to answer that nobody can answer for you are: Is this the career path forward for you? 
Or am I going to have to commute a little bit further because I was put on earth to be a teacher? Or I'm going to take my skills that I've developed over the last X number of years as a teacher and I'm going to apply them in this setting instead of this setting. Um, but the math part doesn't change. And those are all questions we don't want to answer. We don't like those questions. They're not fun. Like they, they, weren't, they weren't part of the, the script we were given in high school when we were told if you just go to college and get a degree, everything's going to be a fine. Um, that wasn't part of the script. And so I think it's having that honest conversation with yourself and recognizing, how long have you been on Baby Step 2, man? Um, probably a little over a year. Dude, you're at beatdown stage. You work all these extra jobs, and you're a teacher, and you're exhausted, and you're so tired, it wasn't even worth failing a couple of those kids because you don't want the paperwork and the fights with the principal. You're all of that and trying to pay debt off, and you see there's no shiny new things. There's no going out to eat. You're at the frustrating part of Baby Step 2, right? I, I, could, I could agree with that. <laughs> I could agree with that. I absolutely could. Yeah, so I guess at the end of the day, I wish there was a magic pill, Rachel, that we could give people yeah, like and James. I, you know, and I know the it. Knoxville area, so I'm thinking like the Powell area, South Doyle. I mean, like there's there's places, James, of, of just – and again, if it means driving another 20 minutes uh, – that may be it. And that's, and that's the frustrating thing about the whole housing conversation, James. And you're not the only one we've had this conversation with. And, and our own team has experienced this as they're trying to find houses. Like, I get it. It's so, it's so annoying to think, gosh, 2019 was just a different world uh, that we live in versus today. And what I could have gotten versus what I do now. And it's just all, it, it is this, um, it's this level of grappling with reality that you have to be able to say, okay, if I want this, I have to believe I can, and not in some like fairy tale way, naive way, but to be able to be like, I really am going to lay out a plan between now and the next five years that I have a goal to own something within real estate. So what does that look like? Does that mean changing, possibly changing careers? Does that mean looking and broadening where I'm looking? Uh, because I really, I, I, I have confidence, James, that you can do this. Because we talk to people on the show all the time that, that make these decisions, but it's not overnight. And like John said, where you are in the process, you're in a hard spot and you still have baby step three to save up for an emergency fund, right? So you're still years out for this. And the world could look a whole lot different in four years, James, when you're actually seriously looking at purchasing something or starting to save for it. So um, give yourself some time. It is a marathon, this whole thing. It is it is years. It's not this instant um, effect that you're going to have these new results overnight. It's just not. And, and so, I wish we did have a, a magic I, yeah, pill, uh, man. We could just hook and that's what's frustrating teachers. about this industry is I feel like there are things out there that are like flashy and like, oh, just do this and this and this and this. And people get into those things thinking they're going to get a quick turn and then they get screwed and they lose money. So it's like, this is the smartest, wisest path, but it's slow, James. It's slow. And it's and I get it. It's not fun. But um, one of the cornerstones of emotional health, one of the cornerstones of relational health is owning reality. Just choosing reality. Here is where we are. And as hard as that is, I promise that the work your body is doing, trying, uh, being frustrated about this and mm. being mad about that and wishing for this, that energy spent is energy that could be going into solving a real challenge mm, that lies before good. you. So if your marriage is sideways, avoiding the conversation does not heal that. Yeah. Um, being a world-class teacher in a great part of the country, it doesn't change the math of, I wanna own a home, so like Rachel said, okay, five years. What's it going to take for me to do from here to there five years? And I'm going to just echo this too, John, because we feel this in our county here in Nashville. How frustrating it is that teachers aren't paid what they should, what they're worth. I know. And they can't even live in the county that they teach. Like that's so frustrating. To all you legislators so. who are just throwing sand at each other in your sandbox, pay teachers and cops for God's sakes. Good grief.